Barry's 37. He lives in a purpose-built uh, house uh, with three other residents and they have uh, 24 our care. Barry, he's got spastic quadriplegia, he has learning difficulties, but he also is epileptic, so he does take seizures quite often. If any seizure lasts more than a couple of minutes, then he has to go to hospital. The negatives in relation to that is that he doesn't know where he's going, he doesn't know why he's going. Uh, when he gets there, he doesn't know who the people are. That, that are looking after them and which is the reason why I go because through you know Barry's Barry's 37 and I'm the one continuous person in his life he's had lots of people caring for him over the years he's even had different doctors over the years but I've always been there so mm. I'm security for him uh, and particularly if he if Barry, one of the things, that, and this is particularly in relation to Barry, is that if he doesn't see me for any length of time, he becomes depressed. Uh, and that's actually, you know, visible. That his skin breaks down and, you know, uh, so that's why it is important that, that, that I'm there. But that's, you know, the negativity in relation to him being in the hospital is the equipment. They're, they're just no prepared. Even though the noise coming in, the, you've seen a consultant before he's went in, they know mm. that he's got profound disabilities uh, and you go into the ward and the nursing staff are, oh my goodness, what do we do? <laughs> we've no got this, we've no got that. Uh, I actually tend to take, because he's, in, he's doubly incontinent, so I'll take pads in with me because they'll, have, they'll be different ones that he'll have. Uh, they, they don't have bumpers for the bed which he needs mm. because uh, because he's shape the leg will come out the side uh, and he could break his ankle do you know so they don't have these special mm. feeding cups special spoons he, like he has a spoon and it has to be coated because as you'll, you you could probably hear is that he grinds his teeth so that's why you have to have the coated spoon the, the positive side that I've experienced is that the, when you speak to a consultant, they're, they're very welcoming of me as his mother going in and spending the time with him. They will, if he's in a room of his own, they will give me a kind of court thing to, to lie on. Or if they can, if he's in a main ward, they'll allow me to stay and come in at nine o'clock in the morning and leave at nine o'clock at night. The support that we've had from health and social care have been different. Uh, in, terms, in terms of the health, that's generally been relatively good. Uh, you know, the odd uh, bit that's not so helpful. But in terms of uh, social care, that's been, that's been from terrible to okay. You know, and I think the I think the difference is that the people on the ground level that uh, provide the, the day to day care for Barry, uh, they are well meant, mm. their hearts in the right place, they want to do their best, but they don't have the training to uh, to you know allow them to provide the best for Barry. Alison. Um works on community council in Drum Chapel and we know that she has um, a son with disabilities. What we find with the people in Drum Chapel and surrounding areas, carers or people in a caring role, sometimes when the person that they're caring for goes into respite, they're so tired of the 24-hour care that they're giving others they forget about the care for themselves. COPE has in Drum Chapel three full-time paid staff here. We have about eight associates who are self-employed with COPE. The rest of our staff are volunteers. We rely a lot on our volunteers from setting up the relaxation rooms for the clients coming in and they can speak to the clients because sometimes clients think, oh, I'm not going in that door, what am I going to say? 
and the, the volunteers are the first people that the clients see when they come through the door and they make them a feel at ease making a cup of tea. A cup of tea works a long way than a, a painkiller does. Well, I hope the integration between the two services is a way to the future. And as I say before, people like Alison, they know that they can go to one organisation. The support there is from all angles. She's not going to get fobbed off. She's not going to tick a box, then say, oh, go through to the next door. We don't have four doors and you make a pick out of which one. Our doors are open. Each and every one of our four doors are open, no matter what your problem is. This whole process of health and social care integration means that there'll be new ways of thinking. Cultures will clash and we need to build some safe spaces where dialogue can take place. And within the Alliance, the Health and Social Care Academy is a forum that we have created to enable discussion and dialogue about new ways of working, about new services to be designed, about new approaches to involving people with lived experience. And that will be crucial as we build a new platform for public service reform in this area in the years ahead.